Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 38 of ASP.NET Grid View tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about using Object Data Source Control with Details View. In my SQL Server database, I have this table TBL employee, which has got ID, first name, last name, city, gender, etc. Now I want to display this data within a Grid View control, but then I don't want to be showing all the columns. Instead, I just want to display ID, first name, and city columns. But then once I select an employee within the Grid View control, then for that selected employee, I want to show all of the columns within the Details View control. We discussed about doing exactly the same thing in part 37, but using a SQL Data Source control. In this video, we'll discuss about using object data source control. Just like a grid view control, details view is also a data bound control. In general, details view is usually used to display one row at a time. Now, since we want to use object data source controls in this demo, we need to build the employee data access layer. So let's go ahead and add employee data access layer class file for, the, for this project. And I'm going to name this as employee data access layer.cs. And now, the important thing to keep in mind here is that, look at the grid view control. It needs only three properties, you know, ID, first name, and city of the employee object. But whereas the details view requires those three, ID, first name, and city, plus the rest of the properties. Now, I'm going to define two classes here to hold employee information, okay? The first class is going to be employee basic class, and this employee basic class is going to contain just three properties, ID, first name, and city properties, okay? Which is what is the data required by the grid view control, okay? And just to speed things up, I have that class already typed, so let me copy that and paste within our employee data access layer. So if you look at this class, it's employee basic, and it's got three properties, ID, first name, and city, all of them auto-implemented properties. Okay, and then I'm going to define an employee class, public class employee, and this class is going to inherit from employee basic. And the reason why I would do that is because our details view control requires ID, first name, and city, plus the rest of the properties as well. So instead of, you know, if I don't make my employee class inherit from employee basic class, then I'll have to define each and every property again within the employee class. But instead of that, you know, just to reuse some of the code, I am actually inheriting, uh, making this class employee inherit from employee basic. That way, I get to define only the properties that are required in addition to these three properties. And again, just to speed things up, I have that class already typed. So let me copy and paste that within our employee data access layer. So if you look at this, you know, the rest of the properties are here, last name, gender, date of birth, etc. Okay, so we are done defining the classes. Now obviously, now we have to write some ADO.NET code. So the first thing to do is to import those ADO.NET namespaces, system.data, system.data.sql client, and system.configuration. Okay, so within our employee data access layer class, first I need a method which is going to return, you know, list of employee basic objects which contain properties ID, first name, and city. But I want, you know, all the employees. Okay, and just to speed things up, I have that method already typed as well. So let me copy and paste that within our employee data access layer. Okay, so if you look at this method, get all employees basic details. Basic details are ID, first name, and city um, properties. Okay, so look at this method. It is actually returning a list of employee basic objects. Okay, obviously we are creating a list of employee basic objects because that's what we want to return back. And then this is regular ADO.NET code. So here we are using the configuration manager class to, to read the connection string from web.config file. Using that connection string, we are creating a SQL connection object. And then we are preparing our SQL command. Look at the SQL command. Select ID, first name, and city columns. So we are only selecting these three columns from TBL employee table. And then we are opening the connection, executing the command, and then we are looping through each row that is retrieved from the database, converting the row into an employee object. Look at this, the column values are now being stored into the properties of this employee basic object, which is then added to this list. And finally, we return the list. Okay, so that is get all employee basic details method. Now in addition to that, so this method is going to supply data for our grid view control. 
but then once I select an employee's record within the grid view control for the selected employee we need to return all of the rows I mean I'm sorry all of the columns okay so obviously now we need a method which is going to retrieve all of these columns for the given employee so get employee details by ID we want employees full details meaning all of the columns okay so now I have this method here let me copy it and paste it within our employee data access layer so if you look at this method look at the method name get employee full details by ID so we are passing in an employee ID the selected employee ID and for that employee we want to get his full details so here look at the return type we are not returning a list of employees because what do we need in the details view just one employee object but all of the columns of that employee okay so we have just one employee object here and again this is um, you know straightforward adio.net code use the configuration manager class read the connection string create the SQL connection object and look at your SQL command select star from TBL employee where ID is equal to at ID so we're using a parameterized query we are using a where clause here and we are filtering based on the ID again we are using um, a SQL parameter here for which we'll have to supply a value and that's why we are creating a SQL parameter object here the parameter name is at ID and the value for that is coming into this method as another parameter okay and then finally add that parameter object to the parameters collection of the command object and then open the connection execute the command and loop through each row and look at what we are doing here we are converting you know the column values into the properties of that object and then once we are done with that finally we are actually returning that employee object back okay let's change this zoom percentage to 100 so we are finally returning that employee object back so we have the two required you know methods the first method is going to return the data for grid view control the second method will return the data for details view control okay at this point let's go ahead and build our solution so that the employee data access layer class is compiled okay so within our web form we need a grid view control and a details view control so let's go to the web form drag and drop a grid view control let's auto format that we want brown sugar scheme and then we need a details view control obviously we want to use um, you know let's auto format this as well let's choose brown sugar scheme now we want to use object data source controls so let's drag and drop two object data source controls okay so first let's configure object data source one control now our data access layer is going to be demo dot employee data access layer and then this has got a method get all employee basic details which is going to return a list of employee basic object list of employee the employee basic object has got ID first name and city columns so click finish now let's associate our object data source one with our grid view control okay and then we also want to enable selection so the select button is shown here okay and the next thing is we want to configure object data source to control so configure data source choose your business object employee data access layer click next let's choose our select method the select method this time is going to be get all employee full detail I mean get employee full details by ID okay and then we want to pass basically the ID of the selected employee okay look at this this method has got a parameter so now I click next obviously we'll have to supply a value for that parameter where is that value going to come from from grid view control okay so from another control on this web form so what's your parameter source it's going to be a control and which control is that grid view one and grid view one dot selected value so that's the property so this ID is going to get its value from grid view one dot selected value property so click finish and let's associate this object data source two with our details view control okay look at that we got um, basically all of the columns there so let's run this now and as you expect when the web form loads you know the data should be displayed within uh, the grid view control 
but then we might get an error. So look at this, we have an error here. Data keys must be specified on grid view 1 before the selected data keys can be retrieved. So if you remember, when we were configuring this object data source to control, we said, you know, the parameter ID which this method expects, you know, get all uh, employees full details by ID, you know, for this parameter, the value is coming from the selected value property of grid view one control. But for us to use the selected value property, we need to set the data key names for grid view one control. Okay, so let's flip this to the source mode, and then within grid view one control, all we need to do is set data key names property, and that should be equal to ID, the employee ID column. Okay, so with that change, let me go ahead and run this now. And when the web form loads, it should render the grid view control. But then there is a problem here. You know, there's no row selected within the grid view control, but then look at the details view. It's showing some blank data there. So when the web form initially renders, when there is no row selected within the grid view control, we don't want this details view to be visible. So what I'm going to do here, within and we don't want to do that within the page load event we discussed about this in part 37 we want to do it in pre-render event so I'm going to copy this event handler and I'm going to change the event name to pre-render and here I'm going to check f grid view one dot selected row if that is equal to null then what we want to do we want to hide details view so I'm going to say details view dot visible is equal to false. On the other hand, if there is a selected row within uh, grid view one control, then we want to turn on the visibility of details view con one control. So that's it. Okay, now let's run this. And as you might expect, when the web form initially loads, when there is no row selected, the details view will not be visible. So now I select the employee's row. Look at that. The selected employee is shown. But there's one problem here. Look at this. This ID, first name, and city columns, they are displayed in the end. Instead, I want them at the beginning. What do I do to correct this problem? Uh, the simplest way to solve this problem is within your details view control. Obviously, for each, you know, row that is displayed here, you have a field here. Okay, so just change those fields. So I want ID, first name, and city columns, rows on the top. So I'm just going to cut them and then paste them on the top within the fields collection of this details view control. So now I run this as you might expect, ID, first name, and city columns will be displayed on the top. So ID, first name, and city, and then last name, gender, date of birth, etc. Okay. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.